open up that map we were working on. Again, it's going to take a while. Alright. Just going to hit V to switch into uh, in-game mode. Alright, so now to import our, our, our new texture we've created, we're going to go up to the uh, import button up here. This little uh, down arrow over a piece of paper. Tap that and it brings up this menu right here. Um, if you had any imported files, you'd see them listed here. I'm just going to, to import something, we're going to right click, go to import files, and it's, by default it's going to bring up a directory, um, probably not what you're looking for. You just hit the browse button and browse to the place where you saved that texture. Um, and you see I have a lot of stuff in here already. I probably need to clean it out. Um, in this case, the default is MPQ Editor, Export, Assets, Textures. And look for the one that we saved, which is called Castanar Panels. And just need to put a check mark on it. Make sure there's no other check marks. Um, to remove all the check marks, you just click the very base folder and then uncheck it again. There's no more check marks. Um, otherwise, it'll import every single thing that's checked, which is not what you want. Uh, let's go back and check that cast in our panels. Right. And you see that it's in it imported it into this kind of random texture or uh, folder layout. Um, the texture is actually not in our map yet and we need to save because if we don't save um, it's going to be hard to work with that texture. So hit save. Now the texture is located in the map um, and what we can do is we can move it to the right folder. We're going to move it to the corresponding folder where the texture used to be. That way when the map queries that texture it prioritizes the one located inside the map file as opposed to the one located in the DD, uh, the MPQ file of the game, um, allowing us to have custom textures. So um, we're going to right click on it, go to move files, and this window comes up. And you're going to want to go to new path, and the path for this is the same path you exported it from the MPQ file. It's going to be assets, and then uh, textures, right? textures. Yeah, okay, and it, you can see it just moved it to a different folder. Then we want to hit save again. Now, I'll, already you'll notice this, this hasn't changed yet. This t texture hasn't changed yet. It should have changed, um, but the, the way the editor works, it doesn't query um, the DDS files again, or the MPQ files again, for the updated textures. It just does it once when the map first loads, and then it just saves, holds on to that texture. So what we got to do is we gotta close out of this, we'll save our map, and we just got to close that out of our map and reopen it. Close and go back and reopen it. And there you are. You'll see that it doesn't look great. Um, the reason being is I, I did make it so dark. The result of changing a texture like that can sometimes be kind of uh, gross looking. Um, in this case, I, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use this the way it is, but at the very least, it does it did succeed in creating a uh, custom texture. Um, yeah, that looks horrible. <laughs> I would not use that, but um, at least for the purpose of uh, experimentation, I, I've shown um, how to do that. Um, now I'll show you I'll show you a map that I've been working on um, called Odin that uses a pretty ridiculous amount of. Uh, custom textures and you can see exactly how I've used custom textures to really get the exact um, look and feel that I was aiming for. Just give it a minute to load up. Freaking out right now. I'm gonna close Photoshop, make things a little bit faster. Let's go. You can do it. Yep, and there's the uh, white screen of death. It's alright, I'm just gonna 
just gonna close out of this real quick and reopen it. Computer's in rough shape recently, so it's been quite slow. All right, so yeah, this map's called Odin. Um, it was more just kind of a, a fun test map. Um, not really aiming for competitive play necessarily. Um, this is more just kind of a just just it's really fun to work on. Um, but it's taught me a lot about how to utilize custom textures appropriately um, in a map. So let's switch over to game mode. Um, so some of the custom textures that I've used. Uh, so we go up to the main here. Um, the most notable custom texture you'll see um, is these are actually these are Braxis Alpha cliffs, and I've exported um, two of the textures that made up that those cliffs and changed them. So originally, if you remember, these lights are orange. I've changed the specular um, texture for this. Uh, Texture, it's got a texture for the texture, if that makes sense. Um, I've, I've exported the specular and I've edited it from orange to blue, and I've also done that for the um, the diffuse texture, and made the metal a little bit more um, bluish gray, um, so it all kind of looks different. I've also changed part of the alpha on the diffuse texture to get rid of the little um, yellow and black tape that you normally get along the edge here. Um, I did that just because the regular space platform cliffs get kind of boring. Uh, I, thought this, I thought this came out pretty well. It looks pretty cool. Um, I've also, you'll see here in the main, I've replaced, I've uh, added a, a secondary um, Castanar tiles. You'll see that these are the regular black ones here, but I've also made a lighter version and I've just replaced um, Castanar panels with that texture. Let me see. Yeah, you'll see. You see what it looks like when I blend it in. Um, I like that texture a lot, and uh, by having that here, it allows me to do some cool, pretty cool stuff. Uh, you can have this blur effect and have the two textures blend into each other very uh, smoothly. Um, additional textures I've changed. Let's take a look. Um, maybe all I'm using right now at the moment. I think it may be. But if I pull up my import menu, you can see all the different textures I've got in here. I've actually kind of a silly one that I've done. This is more just a, a test um, to see if it was possible. Was uh, change the color of the planet back here. Normally it's a bit more of a brown color. I made it a little like a bluish. Uh, that was more just for just testing. Um, different things you can do. I mean, if you get really advanced, you can change all the textures on your rocks, change the textures on all of your doodads. Um, and really, really, really push the limit. The issue you're going to run into is just file size. Um, I believe there's a 20 meg file size limit on maps. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, basically, every texture you add starts adding up and adding up and adding up. And you're better off combining some of these custom textures with textures already in the game. Um, otherwise, you're just going to run into serious size problems. Um, I'm also going to open up um, Alder Terrace. And I'll show you. Uh, I've also used a couple, a couple of custom textures in here. Hopefully, the editor doesn't crash again. Right, this is Alder Terrace. Um, I did release this. This is a finished map, um, barring any changes we need to make based on. Uh, some balance issues. A um, couple, I didn't go quite as overboard with the textures in this one. Um, th the main change I've, I've made is uh, this these small tiles with the grass in between them. That was originally a Bell Shear tile. Um, and if you actually were to load up Bell Shear and use this, this uh, 
this texture, you'll notice that it's a, it's a much different color. It's more yellow, it's brighter, the grass is a lot brighter. Um, so I actually, I did all, I put a lot of work into that, that particular texture to make it look like it matched these, um, these monolith um, tiles that I'm using here. I think it's monolith, right? Yeah, monolith. Um, I also did some, I think, let's see, let's pull up my, yeah, that's, it. that's actually my only custom texture I've used in Alder Terrace. I do also have a custom sound that I made um, for the ambience, so it's another thing that you can do with import, um, but I'm not going to go over that today. So I uh, hope you have learned a lot. Um, it's This is probably one of the most underutilized tools in map making right now. It's extremely easy with Photoshop to create um, just simple different colors, different um, variations on the textures already in the game. Um, if you were to try to go ahead and, and create your own textures from scratch, it's a lot more work because you're going to have to worry about bump maps and specular maps um, and making sure everything tiles properly, which can be a huge pain in the ass, and that's not something that I would really want to tackle. Um, you can always find uh, texture resources out there. There's a lot of like um, game developer forms that have custom textures you can use, and those a lot of the times do come with um, bump maps of their own. And uh, doing that will really expand upon what you can do in the game. Um, one thing I'd really like to see people do, which we really haven't seen much of lately, is uh, custom custom doodads, using custom textures for the doodads, and custom uh, cliff textures, which is uh, underutilized. Um, so yeah, I hope you've uh, learned something. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to post on my uh, forum, or my thread on the forums. And uh, that's all. Have a good one.